Hey everybody, welcome back to the worst and best moments of total drama. My name is Silly Billy, but you can call me Billy. We are back for part two of this series, and if you are wondering, wait, but part two? Where's part one? Then no worries, my friend. I'll link that video in the card above. If I haven't forgotten it, otherwise just go to my channel and check it out there. Last time around, we took a look at Island, and in this video, we jump over to its direct sequel, Total Drama Action. And considering that I nicknamed the season the one that I am most conflicted about when I did the season by season review, you can imagine that I have quite some good and bad moments to mention here. Just like last time, I'll present you my 5 favorite moments of the season, as well as my 5 least favorite aspects. I'll go from lowest to highest ranking, switching between both lists as I go. I won't hold you up any longer, let's just get ranking. Coming in as my fifth least favorite moment of Total Drama action is the entire deal with Izzy being a different character. Twice. Bumble! From a comedic standpoint, I think Izzy is a fantastic character. If I'm in the mood to just turn my head off and laugh at some silly jokes, then Izzy's my gal. But from a story perspective, Izzy's role in action doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Her entire bit as E-scope feels a bit nonsensical, and ultimately it's only used to justify her return to the show, at which point she again undergoes a character switch with Explosivo. I don't know man, for as much as I like Izzy, this didn't really click for me, and as such I have to put her on the lower side of my dislike list. Next up we kick off the top 5 of the best action moments with the theming of this season. There's a lot to say about Total Drama action as a concept. Uh, for one, they expertly make use of the theming of their season to come up with clever challenges that stand out from one another without being too over the top insane. Each of the challenges are memorable in their own right, and the movie genres absolutely help in that regard. But that's not the only reason. As you are well aware by now, I love parodying, and action goes the whole nine yards with their movie theming. Mocking the cliches of all genres and using the stereotypes to their fullest advantage. And besides that, I just really like movies. Then for the worst list, from one wacky return character with a weird role, we go to another. As in number four, we find Owen's role as saboteur. Seeing Owen return at all was pretty weird to begin with. Sure, Owen is a fun character, but it's not like you can't apply his dry style of humor to any of the other characters on the show. And even so, Owen's return is really weird, as he isn't really a contestant, but he does get voting rights just to make with the other contestants. Not only is this straight up cheating, but it's not a role for this lovable giant to fill. They really seem to want to strive for total drama with this change, but it ends up feeling forced and degrading to the character we've come to love. Switching back to the best moments of total drama action, in number 4 we find the room for character development of Island's side characters. With a new season comes new potential, and boy does action capitalize on that. In general, all the characters that made it far into Island are here as well, but it's those characters that made it the least far or got an unfinished or unsatisfying exit that get a second chance at the spotlight, and man do they get it. I won't go over all of them in detail, mostly because a couple of them will still appear later on this list, but characters like Beth, Lashana, Harold and even DJ all get some much deserved extra screen time and storylines that flesh them out as characters so much more than Island already did. And for that, it takes the number 4 spot. On the number 3 spot for worst parts of Total Drama action, we have Justin's fall from grace as Courtney takes over the role of main antagonist. Look, out of all the seasons, I'd say action has the least clearly defined main villain. You could make a case for Revenge of the Island and Pocketu as well, but I'd say it goes to this one. However, there is certainly a major antagonistic force at the start of this season, and man is he attractive. <laughs> Justin is basically Alejandro at the start of action, only difference is that Alejandro actually stays strategical and Justin does not. Oh yeah, and he stays handsome, which again, Justin does not. The twist goes by really quickly, and it's mostly because we have a new antagonist to worry about in Courtney, and clearly we cannot have two at once, right? It's a shame how quickly Justin's storyline has shifted around and ended, placing him in the middle of our worst list. Meanwhile, on the middle of the best list, we find Harold and how he is a textbook definition of an underdog. I feel like Harold and Island is severely slapped on. This guy is such an incredibly strong contestant, he completely solos the first two victories for his team. By the way, I've actually seen some people claim that the Bass win this challenge because of Duncan. <laughs> As such, Harold is the perfect choice to give a main spotlight in the second season, where his role of underdog is fully embraced and developed. And I do mean that. 
Usually when people say the word underdog, your thought goes out to characters that are physically weaker and have little chance of success. Characters like Cody, Noah, Mickey and Jay, Tyler, etc. But really, Harold fits that category the best. Because unlike the characters I just mentioned, Harold has shown several times at this point that he's more than capable of winning total drama. The issue is that his team does not agree with that statement, and he is seen as a worthless addition ready to be booted out. I pick Harold, if for no other reason but to shut him up. And especially when you start with a team of six people, Harold would be their first logical choice to eliminate. Other campers have shown many times to not believe in Harold's unironical mad skills, despite him showing them off time and time again. Harold has nothing to prove to us, the audience, because we know what he is capable of. Harold's challenge lies in convincing others of the same to give him a chance. A true underdog that made for one of the most rootable contestants of this season. <sighs> if only you could have made it to the finale. My second least favorite part of all of action has to be the finale. More precisely, who's in it and who isn't. Action has my least favorite finale out of all seven seasons, and that is because of the ridiculously dumb decision to have it be Duncan versus Beth. I absolutely did not care a single bit for Beth throughout most of this season, but I found myself rooting for her out of necessity because I was rooting against Duncan. Having Duncan in this finale feels like a great plan coming from Island, but with a horrible execution during action, while having Beth here feels like an afterthought. We went to shocking elimination for Lashana, and for Justin, and for Lindsay, and for Harold, and... Well, wait, now it's just four people left. Oh, and Courtney can't win because it would be unfair. Oh, and Owen can't win because it would be unfair. Um, congrats, Beth. Y yay! Okay, I'm pretty sure that's not how it actually went. Actually, no, wait, no, I think it did. But just the fact that a season which is main strong point was the character development for secondary characters is able to give such a poor selection of finalists is not only baffling, but also leaves a sour taste in my mouth for the entire season. So let's quickly move on to my second favorite part of all of action. And just like the number one spot of the island ranking, this spot also goes to Lindsay. This time around it is celebrating the character development Lindsay got as a capable leader. Lindsay starts out this season in a very interesting setting. Last time we saw her she had her falling out against Heather and she learned to stand on her own two feet. Now Lindsay is ready to show us what a girl boss she is when on her own. And man does she not disappoint. Lindsay rules this season as she quickly takes on the role of team captain after Trent is eliminated. I adored this side of her. It was such a great way to beat the pretty dumb blonde stereotype and transcend Lindsay to easily one of the most likable characters of the first generation cast. I would put her in first place if there wasn't one other character that surprised me more. But before we go there, let's first go to the worst moment of Total Drama action. Like last time, I'll give you a couple of honorable mentions and then we dive into the ultimate worst moment of season 2. And now, the worst moment of Total Drama action. And how could it be anything else than... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <laughs> Squeeze me? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, your secret weapon's being weird? When you look up the word derailed in the dictionary, you find an image of Trent accompanying it. Breaking Trent and Gwen up is not only very unfortunate for the cool character we've come to love from season 1, it is also quite possibly done in the absolute worst way imaginable. I don't even mind the jealousy all that much, they are teens after all. However, the number 9 obsession? That is something I cannot simply glance over. It comes as quickly as it goes away and in the span of just two episodes, Trent's character is reduced to an obsessive creep. And what's worse is that this was not even the original plan from the writers, but the studio felt like there wasn't enough drama and so they had to break them up! This entire plotline could have been avoided if the writers were just allowed to tell their own story. Imagine how many more fans Trent would have gotten if it wasn't for this season. As such, I want to make a proposal to the community. Yes, you watching right now, join me in my quest. From here on out, anytime we are talking about season 2 Trent, we refer to him as Trent. Mind the apostrophe, because this, this is not our Trent. And finally, we arrive at the absolute best action has to offer. But first, here are some honorable mentions again.
And now, easily the best part of Total Drama Action, Justin's reveal as a twist villain. When I first saw that Justin made it into action, I was more so surprised than anything. Sure, it was fun to see a character return that didn't get a lot of screen time yet, but why him? He contributed probably the least to Total Drama Island, why not let a character like Noah or Tyler return? But from the Total Drama 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 Drama, 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 drama Island special onward, something changed. Justin got more than one voice line! But not only that, he got a personality. And just when I could get a little excited, Justin goes on to reveal that he is this strategic twist villain who manipulates the girls around him. The first couple of episodes where Justin gets to be this manipulative schemer who uses his charms and good looks to influence Lindsay and Beth are some of my favorite moments in all of action. But what makes me enjoy this even more is that, despite us knowing basically nothing about this guy, this change perfectly fits his character. In the handful of episodes he does get to participate in, Justin is shown to be okay with cheating and manipulation as long as it helps him or his team. And in the second season, that is exactly what he does. And while his storyline is hastily dropped halfway through the season to make way for Courtney, it doesn't change that these first two episodes create one of the most intriguing character moments from all of the seasons for me. But that is going to be it for me. Action is a season that does some things really well and some things really, well, not. But let me know what you think. What are some of your favorite and least favorite moments of action? Let me know in the comments down below. And again, I thank you for watching. This has been Silly Billy, and remember to include an apostrophe in Action Trend's name. Out of.